let's get physical. It's Jordan here back again with this week's update and all the physical releases coming to the Switch. We're in the last week of July, July 27th until the 31st, Monday to Friday. Retail, low print and imports plus our community spotlight where you show off your pickups and potentially win a physical Switch game. And as it's the last episode of the month, we'll be announcing the winner of this month's prize during the show. Before we delve in, I just have to point out that I'm currently in between quite a lot of major dental surgery so my mouth isn't quite what it is normally. I sound a little weird right? Well hopefully everything will be sorted in a couple of weeks and I can speak properly again. Until then I apologize. All right, let's get on with this week's monster episode. Fairy Tale is the big bad boy of this week, in my opinion. A full-blown RPG from Koei Tecmo via the developers, Gus, who are mostly known for the Atelier series. After riding high from the big leap of Atelier Riser, I have a lot of hopes for this one. Had I not been nailed to a dentist chair for the past week, I would have definitely been reviewing this myself. But don't worry, we have Alex on the job, who's giving this the care and attention that it deserves. Honestly, his review is massive. I'm sure if you're fans of the anime or JRPGs in general, you should keep an eye out for our review in the coming days. Click that bell button. And this is Jonathan Rumor's Pick of the Week. Streets of Rage 4 may well have been sent out by Limited Run, but Merge Games are hot on their trails to bring you the retail release of this classic revival. One of the best examples of the genre in recent years, the team behind this really did the series justice and made the Sega classic relevant again. Limited Run already sneaked this one out to those who pre-ordered via them with its more moody artwork, but here we have something a lot more lively, cartoony look. Plus, inside, even the standard edition gets you a keychain and a mini art book. There's a signature edition which also includes five enamel pins, certificate, a bandana, and two CD soundtrack. Oh yeah. Cat Quest 1 and 2 Pawsome Pack is exactly what it says on the tin. You get both Cat Quest games in one package. Both games are very solid in the efforts. And although I haven't played them myself, I do own Cat Quest 2 physically. This seems to be really good value though. Deliver Us The Moon is scheduled to release in Europe this week, not entirely sure if it's getting a US release or not. Anyways, this is an atmospheric exploration puzzle game. You explore the abandoned facilities on the moon to uncover its secrets and hopefully save mankind. Now, I want to stress Deliver Us The Moon was scheduled for this week, last time I talked with the publisher, but don't be wholly surprised if it's pushed back a week or two. Super Trench Attack is the latest game from Pixel Heart, the publisher behind Shmup Collection, Gigantic Army and Finding Teddy 2, which we recently gave away as a prize last week. This is kind of a goofy overhead shooter, kind of like Ikari Warriors in style, but also has some first person stuff going on there too, like in a light gun shooter style thing. I mean, it's probably not going to be their most essential of games, but it still looks like it could be a lot of fun if you've got a friend to play with. Unlike most of their releases, there are only two cover variants as far as I can tell, and they're not that different. Just for games in Europe and VGNY in North America have very similar covers, almost a case of spot the difference here. But the North American version has the dude's undies on show for that bit of extra class. Also, the North American version will probably release a little bit later, not this week. Lovecraft's Untold Stories is supposedly releasing this week in Europe thanks to Badland Games. This is the second collector's edition in the past few weeks from them, following on from Hard West. Untold Stories is an action roguelike inspired by the works of the legendary author. You explore randomly generated levels with all sorts of monstrosities in your way. It's supposedly a lot of fun. This European collector's edition includes the game, badge, artwork, soundtrack, and lithographs. And this is Brent McLean's Pick of the Week. Summer Sports Games is due for release this week in Europe. In North America, perhaps a bit later on, this is another fun box media special, shovelware at its finest. Take part in 12 sports against the AI or your friends. It looks absolute pap, but who knows, some of these kind of games can be fun sometimes. Also, a quick mention to Escape Room Fort Bayard, which is supposedly making its US release this week. Let's jump into the low print releases. Now, something that was announced shortly after last week's video aired, Untitled Goose Game was announced as getting a normal retail release, but also I Am 8-Bit are getting their own little release of it called the Lovely Edition, which includes an exclusive reversible cover as well as environmentally friendly packaging, which is a thing, I suppose. You'll be able to get this at retail in the future, but you can pre-order this rather not that special version from I Am 8-Bit now. Super Rare Games have announced their latest title, this time something very left field. I honestly did not 
expect old school musicals to be getting a physical release. I have to admit, when I first saw the name of the game, I scoffed and yawned. But then I watched the trailer, and you know what? It's actually pretty cool looking, I suppose. It's a rhythm mashup game taking you on a journey of nostalgia with one retro game reference after another. Perhaps a little too in your face, I'm having flashbacks at the rather nauseous Ready Player One movie, but it's a rhythm game and looks pretty cool if you want to blast from The Legend of Zelda to Outrun in the blink of an eye. 30th of July for this one, 4,000 copies available. Pressure Overdrive from Strictly Limited Games. This is a remake of the original game. It's an action-packed vehicle-based shooter. It's not a racer, despite its looks. Supposedly pretty decent, but not something I would jump out and buy a boxed version for. It also has some really unattractive artwork. It reminds me of something from like Whoville or something. Anyways, the standard version has 1,700 copies available, while a collector's edition has 1,300. And that will net you a soundtrack CD, art book, stickers, poster, and keychain. Limited Run are being less aggressive on your bank balance this week, with just two pre-orders going up. Firstly, on July 28th, there is a distribution title for Mega Dimension Neptunia 7, which, if I'm being honest, I don't really get this series. What's the difference between Mega Dimension and Hyper Dimension? Mega sounds less impressive than Hyper? Well, and how could it be number 7, since the series started in 2010, and this originally came out in 2015? Seven games, five years, that screams polish and quality. I'm just joking, of course, I'm sure it's fine for RPG fans on the Switch. Limited Run have a very hotly anticipated title in The Mummy Demastered. Part of their plot to release anything and everything WayForward have ever made physically, no matter the quality. This is actually one that I know a lot of people are excited about. It's a Metroidvania movie tie-in that will actually turn out better than the film. There's some great action, big bosses, and gorgeous pixel art. And God of Resin, Dane Wilkinson, and Gannicus have Mummy D Mastered as their pick of the week. Red Art Games have announced their latest Switch title, Dex, which went up for pre-order last week with 2,800 copies available. This is a 2D action RPG with supposed non-linear elements. It's set in a cyberpunk world, which is all the rage these days, and looks to be a step up in the game selection from Red Art in recent months. I mean, I'm not jumping on it straight away, but you know, I'll keep an eye out on it. It's scheduled to ship sometime at the end of the year. Let's jump into the imports this week. Just remember that if any game takes your fancy and you'd like to import them for yourself, then there are import links below in the description and the pinned comment. It really does help support this little series, so we appreciate any purchase that you make. Plus, in return, if you use our links, you can get 5% off your order if you use the coupon code SWITCHWATCHTV while checking out. That's all one word, SWITCHWATCHTV for 5% off your order. Although, if you do plan on picking any of these up, can I put in a very strange request? Could you save your purchase until August the 1st? Ahem, <clears throat> why? Well, it appears that we just scraped over PlayAsia's requirements to stay in their program, you know, to keep the discount code. So in August, everything starts again. So if you buy in August, that helps us more. It, you know, it gives us a little boost to keep going with this program and hopefully keep the discount code going for a long time. Does that make sense? Anyways, okay, one of the more interesting imports this month is that of Air Missions Hind. This is a mix of arcade and simulation trying to find the balance between hardcore and casual, where you control one of the most famous attack helicopters of all time. Take it for a spin on various missions with plenty of customization. I think chopper enthusiasts are gonna need this one for import. Personally, I'm very excited to give this one a try since it's given me vibes of like a modern day jungle or desert strike, which I think is what I need in my life right now. There's no Western physical release announced, so it's import only at the minute. This is only in Japan and Asian regions. There is English on the cartridge too. It's multi-language, which is cool. There's single player, online play, and even includes co-op, which sounds very interesting. Samurai Spirit's Neo Geo collection may be one to take your fancy for an import since it's arriving much earlier than the Western physical. Limited Run have put up pre-orders for a collector's edition in North America. Pix and Love are putting out a standard release in Europe alongside a sold-out collector's piece, which looks really nice by the way. 
but these are due for around September time. If you don't want to wait, you can pick up this Japanese and Asian release, which has a much more accessible collector's edition to boot. If this collector's edition is similar to Picks and Loves European collector's edition with two CDs of gloriously arranged music, plus an art book and sticker. The game itself contains seven classic Samurai Showdown games, including one previously unreleased to the public, and fans will definitely want to get their mitts on this. It has English, so no worries if you're importing. Buried Stars is getting a physical release, but currently only in South Korea. This is releasing digitally in the West this week, but if you want to pick up this physically, you're going to have to dig deep to find it. Seems to be a mystery adventure visual novel type game. Uh, the Korean game should have English, but I have no idea where to import it from. Play Asia are not stocking it, nor any other places. There is a badass collector's edition too, which makes it all the worse. So, if any links do pop up, I'll put them below, but it looks like you may have to find a middleman in South Korea to help you out on this one, unless it gets a low print release in the future. This week, there is a flurry of visual novels that many of us will never have a chance to take a look at. Yoru Tomosu is a visual novel with a very interesting atmosphere. Sadly, there's no English for this release. E-School Life from Entergram is a Bishuju novel. There is a standard edition and a limited edition, but there's no English. Akuaki Shinkai Gensei no Sho is a visual novel from Idea Factory and it's a no tome. Once again, no English, but there's a standard edition, collector's edition, as well as double pack which comes with another game in the series, so two cartridges. No English! Root Film is the much anticipated sequel to Root Letter from Katakawa Games. I'm sure we'll get this in the West at some point down the line, but you'll have to wait since this one does not have English. Alright, let's jump into the Let's Get Physical Spotlight where you show off your pickups. If you're featured, then at the end of the month, you'll be in the draw to win a physical Switch game. As it's the last week of the month right now, the winner of Splasher from Red Art Games will be announced. Firstly, me. I got in something quite lovely from NIS America. After seeing Alex's review of Void Terrarium, I just had to pick this up physically. I love these dungeon crawlers, especially of the mystery dungeon style, which is one of my favourite genres in games. Honestly, I love them, even if they are very samey and repetitive. The physical for this only comes in a collector's edition, but it is a beauty. I really like what they put in here. You get a soundtrack CD, which is obviously the most important thing for me. You get a quality poster made of some really nice material, a mood pad, pins, and the star of the show is a lenticular keychain, which imitates the Tamagotchi style mechanic found in the game. Uh, it may be small, but it's packed with goodies. My only wish is that the outer box was a bit more sturdy. This can be easily damaged. If only it was as bulletproof as Omega Labyrinth Live. If you want to see the full unboxing, I put one on my old channel. I'll put a link in the description if I remember. Alright, onto Eula. As I said, this week has been a bit all over the place for me due to lots of dental work going on. So I apologize if I miss anyone out. I sent in this photo some fine low print stuff, including Limited Run's version of Hotline Miami. Plus, he got in Paper Mario, still on my list. Adam J trying to get in shape with Ring Fit Adventure. I'm really curious about this title. I played it a little at a friend's house, but I kind of just hate exercise. Ty Whittle was one to pick up Paper Mario, looking very nice indeed, as did our executive producer, God of Resin, as did Boombox. Gerald Gonzalez sent in three games, you know, and the subtitle that's way too long is one that I want to pick up eventually, a pretty hardcore visual novel that's not for the faint of heart. But I do want to pick up more visual novels down the line, so it is on my list. Chucks Taylor's got in Paper Mario, of course, but he didn't stop there, picking up these titles too. Fluttershout picked up a nice little JRPG, a bit of family-friendly fun in this one. Destiny Connect, obviously lacking in a budget somewhat, but still a nice time if you can find it cheap. Mansfield Bear picked up loads this week, including lots from Limited Run and Tricky Towers from Super Rare. Marty Mar finally joined in with the Gigantic Army Cult. This is the Play Asia version, which is the one that I have. Links are below if you fancy this one, rather than VGNYs or just for games. Captain Slow picked up Deadly Premonition, the board game, which is something that I totally forgot about until he mentioned it. I'm curious how it plays. I haven't played a board game in years. Punky Dooster once again allowed us inside their card case with a very Nintendo focused look this time around. I tend to forget that Labo actually has cartridges. Art Phoenix Asordis got in these games, the Darius Collection from Strictly Limited, Brigandine, the Legend of the Runescia, the Japanese version rather than waiting for a limited run which I approve of, plus two copies of Langrissa, showing off the reversible cover which is better due to the retro art style in my opinion. 
Jean sent in these games, including two copies of Jim, uh, which apparently is a long story, plus some new releases from North America, Kingdom Majestic and Spirit of the North, or as I call it, the Fox game. Retro Boy reminded me that this Shantae actually got a physical in Europe. I don't know why, but I always thought this was a North American exclusive, but they found it really cheap and I'm jealous. They also did a nice little unboxing for you. All the way from Chile, Gonzalo Garrido sent in these games, including some nice reversible covers. But the star of the show is the behemoth from Limited Run, the collector's edition of Blasphemous, which looks stunning. That artwork, man, you could hang that on a wall in an art gallery. Neverbirth finally got their hands on Xenoblade Chronicles, the Big Daddy edition, plus this wealth of titles with the steelbook of Luigi's Mansion 3. Roadrunner got in the Wii U versions of Finding Teddy 2 and Shmup, like I did, since I almost have a full PAL set of Wii U games. Plus, an obscure title that I believe is German only at the minute, I could be wrong on that, Space Blaze. I know that my friend Jonathan in Australia was tearing his hair out trying to find a place that would ship it out to him. Our executive producer Ganicus finally bit the bullet and picked up Breath of the Wild. You're in for a treat, boyo. Dua Troa picked up the lovely package of Little Town Hero as well as the new-ish release of Stranger's Wrath which is also on my list. Rorn went a bit hardcore actioned this week with two platinum classics plus Ion Fury which is also on my list. Jonathan Wharton Walker sent in these games with another Ion Fury plus the shmup that makes me look like a chump. Esprit I just can't justify like $60 on one arcade shmup as much as I really really want it. Andrew Kelly got quite enthusiastic this week with a string of games to behold, loads of low print stuff from all over the place, but he was most excited about the massive monster that isn't even a Switch game, Spelunky for the Vita. He was very excited about that. Lord Vapor was one to pick up Hard West from Badland Games. Seems to be a nice little package with some good things inside. Hopefully I can get this one myself. Aside from Paper Mario, Boombox picked up these games including Indie Clips, the first title from Ultra Collectors, plus Book Bound Brigade, a fine metroidvania that is import exclusive. It has English though. After hearing about It'll Do and one print games from us, Canuck jumped in and ordered the nice little collector's package which includes some nice little goodies. They also picked up the recent release of Warhammer which is supposedly rather good. Jumball Skull picked up these two games that I want for myself, although according to a friend, the stickers that are inside Iron Fury are slightly disappointing. Pretty with Horns picked up Astral Chain, one of the best games on the system, no question. Has there been a sale on Astral Chain recently? So many people picking up this one now, including Martin Southern. Not complaining, honestly. Hopefully it can become a long-term seller for Nintendo. Also fantastic to see Shmup Collection, apparently the North American version was delayed slightly so you'll have to wait a bit longer to get this awesome release over there. JP sent in this photo with Paper Mario plus the collector's edition of Mighty Switch Force, nice. And finally to end this week's long ass show, we have Ricky who thanked us for helping spend his dosh on some of these games, especially the stunning Super Robot Wars trilogy. There's not many better things to splash the cash on than those three games. Thanks ladies and gents, it's always fantastic to see what you've got. Send me your pictures over on Twitter at so what about game. You can DM me or you can tag me and use the hashtag let's get physical and I'll give you a nice little retweet to show that I got it. Or you can email us at contactors at switchwatch.co.uk. Just make sure you start the email title with community spotlight so don't miss it. Plus we have a discord which is a nice way for us to have a talk with you guys and you can send your pictures over there in the submissions section. The server link is below. But... Before we end the show, it is time to give away Splasher from Red Arts Games to one of you who entered your pictures in this month. Here are all your names. Let's give the wheel a spin to see who's going to win. And the winner is... Congratulations! Please contact me in the same place that you submitted your photo. So if you put your picture on Discord, send me a message on Discord and so on. I will sort you out sharpish. Right guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of New Physicals. My voice is absolutely dead and I hope that, you know, next week I can speak much better. Maybe. We'll see. Special thanks to our executive producers, Dane Wilkinson, God of Resin, Brent McLean, Jonathan Rumo, and Ganicus, and all of you who have joined our memberships. Plus, if you're watching all the way to this point, you are an absolute legend. I love you. We really appreciate it. It helps us out so much. Don't forget to check out last week's episode 
Uh, my voice is dead. I need to go back to the dentist. So, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Yeah.